please 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 make sure you take a pencil and ruler into your physics exam with you because you might be asked to draw a diagram involving a lens now let's look at the basics of lenses there are two types of lenses one makes the light come together to a point one of them makes the light spread out or go further away from each other. They're both very used in modern life and they work due to refraction. Refraction being the bending of light when it goes from a less to more dense material such as glass or perspex. Now let's look at the names. The top one is called a convex lens uh, or converging lens. It makes the light converge. The second one is called a concave lens or a diverging lens. The way to remember them is that a concave lens kind of caves inwards a bit like a cave. Um, so that's the way of splitting them up because they're very similar names. Now, they are used absolutely everywhere in modern life. You will have one in a camera in your phone or any sort of camera. Um, they allow us to see space in telescopes. They allow us to see bacteria in microscopes. And obviously they are used in glasses as well to correct both long and short sightedness. They're also used in things like magnifying glass glasses, um, which we'll have a look at how those ones work in particular um, in a little bit. So let's have a look then today at how we can basically work out magnification. So magnification, first of all, it is the same equation as you'd find at, at biology. You need to know the image height and the object height and you need to divide them. It will be a ratio, which means there'll be no units as long as you make sure the height of the two objects are the same. So let's say in centimeters or in meters. So let's have a look at drawing out a ray diagram. This is one of the trickiest things you can do, but if you follow a couple of key steps, um, you won't go wrong. So ray diagrams then, you'll have a straight line or a flat line usually drawn for you in your exam. You'll have a lens, uh, which could be the lens or could be the symbol for a lens. And you'll have an object, which I find easiest to use, a tree. Now, um, they will also be labeled on the diagram a capital F, which stands for the focal point or the focus. Now, as you see from the diagram above with a convex lens, that's where the light focuses at. A small case F might be drawn for you, or you might need to label, which is called the focal length, the distance between the length and the focus. And this big axis I drew earlier is called the principal axis, i.e. it's very important. So um, you might find also labeled we have 2F, uh, which is just two times the focal point. Now, um, first ray I'm going to draw, and I'll uh, draw out the rules in a second. Uh, this is ray one, what, ray number one. Ray number one, initially travels parallel to the axis, parallel meaning in the same direction as, then it travels through F, the focal point or the focus on the other side of the lens. Ray number two goes straight through the middle of the lens and straight through the middle of everything. So it's actually quite an easy one to draw this one. So straight through, it's got to be right in the middle of the lens as close as you can. It doesn't bend, it doesn't refract because of the angle it hits the lens at. So it travels through the center of the lens and you've got to make sure it keeps going. You can't make it stop at any point. Draw an arrow on it as well to make sure examiner knows you know what you're talking about. Now there is a third arrow you can draw. Um, I prefer to keep it simple and not draw that one in. But let's figure out where the image is formed. So the image is formed where the two rays meet. Now, because I drew the lines from the top of the image, now the lines are on the bottom uh, below the axis. So that indicates to us that the image has been flipped or inverted, so it's upside down. So as well as drawing these diagrams, you need to be able to describe the images according to three criteria. So criteria one is, is it upright or inverted? Is it upright or upside down? Criteria two, is it magnified, i.e. got bigger, or diminished, i.e. got smaller? And number three, is it a real image or a virtual image? So let's go through each of these criteria with my diagram. We just talked about it's inverted, it's upside down. It's also diminished, it's a bit smaller than the object that originally caused it, and it is a real image. So let's define what a real image means. So a real image is where the rays cross over, so the two rays of light I drew actually crossed over, and an image can be projected onto a screen, like in a cinema projector or in the back of your eye, the rays are actually there. A virtual image means obviously it can't be projected onto a screen and it's not formed when rays cross over. So we'll come on to an example of that next. So the second example with a convex lens, um, 
again, we're going to set up in a similar way. We can have our two focal points and our principal axis. But this time the image, sorry, the object has moved. Instead of being quite far away, it's now quite close to the lens. So let's draw in our lines. Line number one in red goes parallel, then through F. Line number two goes straight through the center of the lens. Uh-oh we have a big problem. The lines are not going to cross over. So what do we do? Well, if you are viewing these um, these uh, rays of light coming from the left to the right, your brain would play a trick on you and it would appear like they were coming from behind the lens. So what we do is we trace the rays back. I would do this in dotted lines um, and we find they cross over if we trace them back and that's actually where the image is. Just like a magnifying glass, your brain tricks you into thinking the object is now bigger. So trace the rays back until they cross over and that's where your image is, behind the lens. Let's go about describing these this new image then. So it's actually the uh, exact opposite of the previous image. It's now upright, it's the right way up. It's magnified um, and it's actually not real because the rays of light did not cross over. We had to trace them back to cross over. So this is a virtual image, which is the, meaning the rays don't cross over and you can't project it onto a screen. So those are the two options really for convex lenses. Now let's talk about a concave lens or a diverging lens, which shows only one diagram you need to know. So let's set it up like before. I've got my principal axis in here. I've got my lens. And one thing to note as well, which I forgot to mention earlier, is the symbols. Sometimes you'd be asked to use the symbols, um, which those are the symbols for convex and concave. So let's uh, draw the ray of light coming from the top of my tree, um, which I've drawn slightly too big, but we'll work with it. So ray of light goes in, hits the lens. Now we know the concave lens does not make the rays go close together. It's going to get further apart. So it's going to go kind of upwards diagonal here. So we draw it going upwards, but you draw it going upwards in line with F, if you see what I did with the ruler there. But this time it's F on the left-hand side of the lens. So this time, we um, need to do ray number one, which I've just drawn in. Now, instead of it going through F on the other side of the lens, it goes through F on the same side as the object, but it's got to be in line with it. So you've got to be really careful with your ruler and trace it back. Now, ray two is exactly the same. It's only ray one that's changed. Ray two goes through the center of the lens, but again, we notice these rays don't cross over. So we have to trace our original one back with some dotted lines. And we do find if we do that, they do cross over on the left hand side of the lens. And this time it's a very, very small image. It's hardly, hardly see it on my diagram there, which is our image. This is how, uh, like, for example, a telescope lens work makes a big object into a small image. So it's smaller or diminished, it's inverted and it's virtual. It's not actually there. 